If you're a lead guitarist, this is probably going to be the most important video you'll ever watch. I'm going to teach you how to shred, but without over shredding. Now, the reason why this is so freaking important for lead guitar players is because what you just heard, had I continued to play that style, those same super fast notes, for another mm, 7 or 13 seconds, you would get sick of it. What happens to most of us lead guitar players that learn how to shred is we fall into this trap and that's all we do. You see, a guitar solo is supposed to tell a story. It's supposed to take you on this journey. And I'm not talking about the band journey. And if all you do is just try to play every single note as fast as you possibly can, you kind of destroy the life of the song or the life that the song could have. But don't fret because Jason is here to save you. I'm gonna give you a five part guitar solo format that's really gonna captivate your listeners and it's gonna add so much more life to your guitar solos. And don't worry, there will be some room for shredding. Now before we get started, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel and ding that little bell. And also hang around till the end because after we go through these components here, I'm gonna let you hear the entire solo, what that sounds like in the full mix. Alright, so the first part of your guitar solo, I want you to think in terms of like a movie starting out. So this is kind of like the intro and I call this a melodic pattern, what we're going to do because you're telling the story. You're kind of introducing your listener to the different characters, which are your different notes here. And you want to have a melodic pattern to have something to build on later. The second part is what I call the build. So now you want to kind of beef things up a little bit. You want to add some more notes and add some more characters to your story, so to speak. And you're just giving your listener a little bit more. Still kind of keeping them hanging there. We're not giving them the full shebang yet. But we're kind of just allowing this to build and breathe. Build and breathe. I almost sound like Miyagi. Build. Breathe. So you've taken your listener through the journey in the beginning, all right, and then you let it build up after that. So now you're here at the climax of our little movie, so to speak, you know. I like to think of these as a movie because it starts out in a certain way, it builds, you get introduced to more characters, and then boom, here's your climax. So this is where you can shred, this is where you can really show people what you can do on guitar and what you're made of. Now the fourth part of your guitar solo is what I call the twist, okay? So you've done your shredding piece here, right? You've, you've shown your listener, hey, this is serious business, you know? You've done some sweep arpeggios or some, some awesome speed picking with some palm muting in there. Sounds really cool, but let's bring your listener back to a melodic part of the guitar solo. And you could even almost repeat what you did in the beginning, but add some new flavors to it, add some more notes to it, and make it go into some different directions. Now, you can continue to shred a little here as well. 
But what I want you to think is melodic shredding, not necessarily just shredding. Number five is what I call the memorable outro. Okay, this is how you end your guitar solo. And I call it memorable outro because you need to make it memorable. Don't end on just some dull moment here. I mean, this is the end of your movie. This is the end of your story that you're telling right here. So this could be a pattern, but I kind of recommend making this short. And sometimes this could be even just a series of like two, three, or four notes. It's just a real quick little lick there that's very memorable so i probably want you to spend more time on this part even though it's shorter than anything else in the guitar solo because this is what your listener is going to remember the most now let's hear what this solo sounds like all together and i'm actually going to let you hear it in the full mix with a backing track and hang around after that because i actually have a confession to make to you guys and i'm going to share some more things that's really going to help you become a better lead guitar player <laughs> I started out as a lead guitar player and you know being a metalhead you know getting into metal music and all that you know I was like man I want to play fast guitar solos so I worked on that and I worked on that like relentlessly day in and day out and I got really good really fast I got really fast really fast here's the problem though I got to the point where that was really all I could do anytime it was time for me to play a solo I just shredded. That was all I could do. And it was very limiting, okay? And it got to the point to where I would actually just play the same shred patterns over and over because that's what I was practicing, you know? Uh, but even, even as I learned new patterns to play fast, it just all sounded jumbled together. And I actually got to the point where my guitar solos started to sound muddy. You know, I was trying to play so fast that the notes were just jumbling together it was a really bad time so I had to break away from that and one of the things that I did was just started focusing on one note at a time I started to break out of that by treating each note as a story or as part of the story right so think of the guitar solo pattern that you just went through you know we went through five different patterns five different phases which is kind of like a movie script you know what I mean I like to I like to relate it to that because that's essentially what you're doing you're telling a story to your listener and one thing you had to understand when you're playing lead guitar is it's not so much about you. And, and this is kind of hard to swallow for a lot of us lead guitar players because, you know, you spend so much time getting good. You spend so much time learning those sweep arpeggios, you know, or the speed picking patterns or string skipping, whatever the case is. Uh, you know, so you want to showcase that. And that makes sense. It's admirable that you spend so much time learning your craft. But the thing is, you got to remember that it's less about you it's less about showing off and look what i can do and it's more about captivating the listener captivating the person that's going through your story here you don't want your story to be just a jumbled bunch of you know notes that you can play as fast as you possibly can this is why i have a hard time listening to even some famous guitar players and i will not name names that's not you know that's not what i'm here to do but there's even several like really renowned amazing guitar players and I, I can only listen to about maybe a minute of their music because it's just more of the same over and over and over and it's like okay you're an awesome fast guitar player we get that but I want the story 
okay? And I think that your listeners want that from you when you play guitar solos. And there's still going to be room for your shredding. You're still going to be able to show out. And it's okay. Look, it's I'm not saying don't shred, guys. Please don't get me wrong. I love shred guitar. I love hearing fast guitar solos. I love even watching videos like here on YouTube and, and social media of even some of even some of the no-name guitar players, and I, I don't mean to be derogatory, but just some of the non-famous guitar players. I mean, I guess I kind of fit in that bucket too, but I love to watch them, and it's amazing some of the stuff they can do. That's a beautiful thing. It's admirable because it takes a ton of practice. You know, what I'm saying here, though, is just don't allow your solos to be just that. And nothing else because then it's not going to have substance to it it's not going to tell that beautiful story that you want you know your listener to hear you want to captivate your listener that's what this is really all about so think two things think less of self and more of telling a story more of like relaying this beautiful story that you want to tell with your guitar notes and the second thing is focus on each individual note again what part of the story is that particular note telling? Now, real quick, guys, for those of you who don't have this yet, I give away a free practice guide. It's called 10 Metal Riffs and Licks, and it's just a really simple daily practice guide to help you get better. You can download that. There's a link in the description of this YouTube video, along with my Patreon link that's in there as well, so definitely check that out. Uh, guys, let me know if you have any questions whatsoever about what we went through here, about the five parts of the guitar solo format. The thing is, you know, I want to end with this. The thing is, you don't have to follow that exact pattern I gave you. You know, you can change those pieces around how you want, or you may do three of those parts and not five. That's okay. You know, my main point again, and I'm going to repeat this because it's very crucial, is to remember it's not all about you. It's about the story you're telling with your guitar. And this is why Joe Satriani is so awesome. He, every one of his solos tells, it's like a movie script, you know, and this is, uh, this is kind of uh, what inspired me to do this. And also remember to focus on each individual note. You know, what part of the story is that specific note telling you? Your guitar solos will be awesome. So again, let me know if you have any questions or if you want to leave a comment and just and kind of give me your thoughts on guitar solos in general and fast guitar solos. Please leave those in the comments. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your support. Until the next video, as always, keep it metal.